Hey guys, it's Becca here with Becca's Easy Recipes and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making caldo de, de res. Sorry guys, my Spanish is a little choppy. But it is a, a Mexican beef stew. So what I have today are, um, I have a, a chuck tender roast. And I'm going to be making a lot today, so I've got two of these. I have a bag of carrots. They're whole carrots. You can use baby carrots if you want to. Um, I have a whole onion. I have chipotle chili pepper. And I have Spanish paprika. Garlic powder. Onion powder. I have cumino or cumin. I have um, black pepper. I have some cilantro. That's a big bush, so. <laughs> I have also some sazon, which you can buy these in the Spanish aisle pretty much at any store. Come in a box of like eight or so. And I have potatoes. I like to use the, the gold rusted potatoes. I don't know why. I just think they're pretty, I guess. <laughs> So let's get started. Um, first, I am going to put some gloves on and dice the meat up. I want to dice it in small bite sized chunks just because I think it's a little bit easier to eat. Um, but you can do it whatever size chunks you want to. Um, so. And this recipe is pretty simple. It just needs to cook for a couple of hours to help tenderize out the meat. So, I'm getting my gloves on. And y'all, I'm so excited. My daddy gave me this, uh, this cutting board here. And I'm gonna show you right now. It's a little marble cutting board. And I love it. It's easier to clean than the other one I had. The other one I was always having to bleach it and stuff. So I have two rows about the same size. Pretty close. There's, I took them out yesterday to thaw out. They're still kind of frozen, so um, it might be a little tough to cut. But I am making a bunch of stew today. For some friends of ours. And this here, guys, um, is really good for, like, if you're not feeling well. Because um, you can add, like, um, ginger and stuff like that. Ginger paste, you know. Um, you can add whole garlic cloves, which I may do just because garlic is good for you. And it flavors everything well, so. Okay. Now. And guys, this um, dish is really good with corn tortillas. Um, but I am going to be uh, well, my neighbor is making jalapenos cheese cornbread. Well, actually, it's green chili cheese cornbread. Because the green chilies are not as spicy to us, anyways. And they're a lot uh, easier to package up. 
and they can dip it in their soup. In this soup, you can make it uh, with a thick gravy or you can leave it um, more juicier than uh, a normal like broccoli cheddar soup or something, you know. So I'm just cutting these in bite-sized pieces. I uh, will go to the stove in a minute after I get it all cut up and sear it. So let me get back to you after I get all this stuff cut up and we will go on from there. Okay guys, I got my two pots here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them both on to medium heat. And I have some roasted garlic infused olive oil. So I'm going to use this because this just gives it a ton of flavor. And I want to really sear my stuff good my meat and this I found it at Albertsons guys this is the first time I've ever found it there so I was pretty excited okay I'm gonna let my pans get hot and then I'm gonna throw my meat into them Sorry guys, this hair cutting board is very heavy. So I'm gonna put half my meat into this one. I'm gonna put the other half into this one. I'm gonna wash my cutting board, cause it's nasty. Okay, and I want this to sear pretty good. I want it to get a nice um, crust on it. So, I'm gonna let this get real hot. Normally I would wait till my oil is heated up, but I'm kinda on a crunch time. So, I'm just gonna throw it in there. I'm 
I did peel them first. <laughs> Go ahead and add my seasoning to this. you're cooking. I'm going to add a good tablespoon to each pot. I'm going to add my garlic powder. And it's probably going to be about the same amount depending on what you're putting in. I want it to be nice and flavorful. This one is granulated onion powder. I have my chipotle chili pepper. And you don't have to add this. I just like for it to have a little kick, you know. Spanish paprika. You can go sparingly on that if you want to. Um, if you like to have more bold flavor, you can add a little more. Gives it a kind of a nutty flavor to it. I'm going to add a pack of sesame to each pot. I love this stuff right here. You can put this on anything pretty much. And if you don't think it has enough, add another pack. It's not going to hurt anything. It just adds on top of the other flavor. Okay. I'm not going to put... Because um, normally you would dice up some onion and put some in here. I'm not going to put whole onions. I'm going to put um, the dried onion flakes. Only because not everybody likes onion. So if I put that in there, if they don't see it, you know, then they may still eat it. But it's got to have some onion, a little bit of onion. And I have this big here gallon tub of, uh, well, not gallon, it's three pounds, but of the dried onion flakes. And I'm going to put probably good two tablespoons. I'm going to add some salt. So 
probably a good tablespoon per uh, per pot. I'm gonna add some bay leaf. I'm gonna probably add like two or three per pot. But you want to be sure and take them out before you serve it. And get it out of there. I can't do any battle of babies here. <laughs> Who's gonna win? Becca, what? Okay. I do have some beef flavor bouillon powder that I'm gonna add to this as well. This helps spruce up the beefiness. You know what I'm saying? This is nice and stirred up. And if you want, you can do this in sections so that your meat doesn't like boil, you know. You want it to kind of fry up a little bit. So while this is um, getting its first on there, I'm going to put up my potatoes. So I will get back with you guys. <laughs> Excuse me. This came out of nowhere. But anyways, I'll be back. Okay, I think it's nice and seared. You see I've got some of the crust on it. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add just a little bit of flour to kind of help thicken it up a little bit after I get it, the juice in it. About a half a cup per pot because, like I said, these are going to be a lot. Let's see. this up, let the flour cook a little bit. I don't know if you can tell that I'm mixing the flour up and it has the um, the little bits of meat and stuff cooked on the bottom. So when we add our liquid it's going to Deglaze the pan and add that much more flavor to our, our soup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a um, 32 ounce box of chicken stock to each pot.
And if you're making this at home for just your family, you're gonna uh, probably, of course, use less of each ingredient. And if you wanna make a big pot, you can certainly uh, freeze it. You know, what you don't uh, use. And I tell you guys, this soup is just flavor stacked on flavor stacked on flavor. So, you pretty much can't go wrong with this. <laughs> now we're going to stir it up so we can get the little bits and pieces off the bottom. We're going to turn our heat down to probably about three, which is a little like a low medium heat. But I don't know if you can see how the juice has gotten a little bit thickened. Of course, we're going to add more water and stuff to this I'm gonna turn this one down. okay now I'm gonna add my potatoes and carrots to each container each pot <clears throat> And I just kind of slice these up in little chunks because I still want some uh, thickness to my stew. Stir it around, get it all incorporated in there and nice and um, there get everything nice and coated. Now for my potatoes. And I just kind of dice these up in small chunks. Because like I said. Everything's easier to eat when it's in smaller pieces. Okay. Man, this looks 
scrumptious already. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to cut up some uh, corn chunks off the cob, and I'll add those here in just a minute. Okay, y'all. <clears throat> This is looking delicious. Now I'm fixing to add my corn. And I make I cut them into little chunks like this. And all you do is just get a corn cob, take the uh, silk off, and uh, get you a knife and and put it um, on your corn cob and just kind of hit it with your other hand and it'll break off. What? What is going on? <laughs> Sorry, y'all. And I'm going to add some more water to this. And you kind of want to add hot water to it. That way it doesn't slow the cooking process. See, I'm in plenty of water. Because as it cooks and stuff, some of it will steam out, you know. So, look at this beauty, y'all. And as you add water to this, you can taste the juice and see if you need to add a little more seasoning to it. It's just on your uh, preference of your what kind of flavors you like, you know, and how strong you want them. But these are going to cook for a couple of hours because I want my meat to get tender. I am going to add some Roto tomatoes to these. And I have the uh, the fire roasted rotel, which is going to add another layer of flavor.
I'm just going to add the juice and everything to it. Then we'll stir this around. some lemon juice to these. <clears throat> also, and um, you know, to give it a little acidity. And I like to do one good squirt. Now, if you don't have lemon juice or lime juice, um, you can use whole uh, lemons or limes and just add them to your dish when you bowl it up. With this guy, it's going to be so good. So we're going to let this simmer for a couple of hours. And... Um, then we'll come back to it, okay? See y'all in a little while. Okay, y'all. It's been a couple of hours. We're going to check our soup. And I did add a can of corn. Only because I didn't think that I had enough corn chunks in there. So I want y'all to check this out. And see in the... The sauce is just thick enough, but not too thick. And we have to remember to take our bay leaves out. Hopefully we can find them. So, we are going to give this here a taste test. I'm just going to taste the soup and see how flavorful it is. Hey y'all. Okay. So, oh, hi. let's check it out. Cheers y'all. Mmm, very flavorful. I mean, guys, there's all kinds of seasonings in this. But you can put whatever you want, you know. I did add, um, I went ahead and added two cloves of garlic. One to each pan. You can if you want to. Because you are adding garlic powder too. So, I just ha like to have a little bit of extra in there, you know what I'm saying? Let's see how tender this meat is. Mmm. That is good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's very hot, but dang, that's good. <laughs> For as simple as this is, man guys, it is delicious. Let's go ahead and get another shot of that there soup. Now who wouldn't want to eat that? Am I right? So I gotta let this cool. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm going to let it cool down and I'm going to put it in my containers. I did make some um, 
little cups of onion and cilantro so that they can add it to their dish when they're ready. But we are going to serve corn, uh, green chili and cheese cornbread. Most of the time it's served with corn tortillas uh, warmed up, but we thought everybody might like the cornbread better. You know, just I'm just basing it off of who I'm feeding. So if it was me, I would do corn tortillas because I just love to roll them up and dip them in there. Oh, it's so good. So, guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. And uh, I just wanted to do a quick shout out. My friend Lauren and um, Zelmer had kind of requested this. So I'm making this for you guys. I hope that y'all tried it at home and you like it as much as we do. Um, it's great on today, on days like today when it's kind of cold and windy out. And it makes you feel good if you're not feeling too well, you know, you're a little bit under the weather. So just give it a shot, guys. I think you'll like it. Um, and you can add cabbage to this, you know. Um, you can add pretty much whatever you want. This is just like the basic ingredients. But I just want to say that I love you guys. I really do. And just remember, you're smart, you're beautiful, and you're everything that God made you to be. And don't let anybody tell you any different. So, just remember, love you guys. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. And be safe out there if you're traveling. Okay? Bye!